Okay, so we're out here with the beast, and we got ourselves another upgrade today. All right, so for those of you that don't know, this is my 89 Cherokee, and it's got a 4.6 liter stroker. It's a Renix, and uh, on the Renix, they like their um, injectors to be a little smaller than some of the new stuff. So right now, I'm running some four-hole uh, EV6 injectors, which means that they're the small plastic body. It has nothing to do with the connector. And uh, right now they are a 19.6 pound Saab injector, and they're doing okay. But uh, the, the long-term fuel trim is still a little high, so I could stand to go a little higher uh, with a, a stronger injector, one with a higher flow rate. So I think today we're going to do some fuel rail business. If any of you guys are on the uh, the Facebook groups, you may have heard the name K Suspension thrown around before. A guy named Raffi that uh, is really active and uh, does all that business uh, started talking to me, and we had ourselves a little trade because he needed a scanner for his Renix, and I've been itching to see what all the talk of the town is about these new 12-hole injectors because you know four-hole isn't cool anymore. So first off. In case you don't know, this is what a fuel injector looks like. It's something that goes between the fuel rail and the intake manifold, and its job is to spray fuel. Big old squirt machine. So the holes have to do with the nozzle over here. So if you notice, there's actually 12 holes in the injector on that little disc, and that's what actually, that's what the fuel comes out. That's what sprays. So the reason the holes are better is because when you're injecting fuel into the engine you don't want it to be a liquid you want it to be basically you know uh, a gas you want it to be atomized so that way it actually mixes with the air better and actually burns and all that stuff because liquid isn't really useful to us so spraying it like a super soaker ain't really doing it when you want more of like a mist so the more holes you have generally the more atomization you're gonna have and the uh, the better the flow there's actually pictures and stuff where you can see the difference between like a, a one hole and a four hole where the one hole just looks like a little, little squirt and the four is more of like little little jets so it helps atomization which should mean better efficiency maybe more power stuff like that so we won't know until we try uh, these ones right here are uh, this is an EV6 body with uh, the US car plug so it's not gonna work with the older Jeeps so you will have to get some kind of adapter that goes from the US car this round plug to the Jetronic which is the square plug so uh, on case suspension you can either get the adapters or you can get the pigtails if you wanna like cut your wiring and do that but eh, I'd rather just use the adapters I don't like cutting factory wiring if I don't have to so that's very cool so the injectors that he recommended for me were these right here, the 0280, 156, 181, 161. And uh, he says that these are like 21.6, I think, something like that. We're going to see. I'm a little skeptical about the flow rate. I feel like they're going to flow a bit too much, but we'll try it. We'll try it. So... We're going to swap in some 12 holes, see if we notice any differences in, you know, the engine running, any fuel economy improvements, stuff like that. And just all around to see if it runs any better. So, turn this guy on and take a look. Alright, so in case you're curious, this is an REM2 right here. Super useful for uh, diagnosing your Renix machine, see what's going on. So, one of the diagnose options that we have is our fuel trims. So right now, you're seeing we're in open loop. We got no injector millisecond, you know, pulse width because it's not running. Uh, our short term, since we're in open loop, just stays at 128. And our long term is 166. So the long term is what we're curious about. You're never going to see long term if you don't see closed loop. But this is how much fuel on average it needs to run properly. So stock is about 128. So the closer you are to 128, the better. This goes from 0 to 255. But uh, yeah, so our long term's a little high, and it could stand to be lower. So we're going to see if these injectors, one, will bring down the long term, and two, if we can even get into closed loop. That's what I'm worried about, because I was fighting this a long time ago, trying to get other injectors to work, and they just they weren't doing it. So I'm a little iffy. So, in case these don't work, we still got the sobs, and all we did was waste a little time. But, just for uh, giggles, let's start it up. 
so you can see what this thing sounds like with four hole injectors and all that if there's even a difference it's gonna run rough because it's a renix and it's cold but yeah you'll see Ooh, nelly bit of a high idle there so right now you can see our injector millisecond is ridiculously high because renix has a warm-up mode where it dumps a bunch of fuel in there to try to warm up the catalytic converter and then it'll finally drop down into closed loop so we have to sit here and wait I think it's one of these values right here. I still need to do some research. I don't know if it's this one right here. One of these counts down, and I think it has something to do with the warm up. I think it's this one, but I'm not totally sure. Is the mystery bites, by the way. So, yeah, hopefully it uh, smooths out a little bit. Yeah, because you can see the, uh, the milliseconds start to go down to something a little more reasonable. So what it's looking for is we want our oxygen sensor to start swinging. So if you notice it's coming down, it's very good, that's what we like to see. And what it's going to do, the engine is going to continuously keep dropping the, uh, the milliseconds and then it's going to try closed loop once the oxygen sensor hits a certain limit. So it's going to go co closed loop and then it's going to try to fluctuate and get the oxygen sensor to move. That's a good working closed loop system. It's a shame I can't show everything on the screen at once. But you notice it keeps going lower and lower. Okay, so see we're in closed loop. It's dropping our short term, and it's dropping our millisecond. Okay, it recovered. Good. Well, wow, it's actually running really nice. I'm impressed. Must be the warm weather. Usually it fails a couple times. So now, this is what a good oxygen sensor looks like. Ish. All right, I kind of lied. We're not good yet. What we're looking for is a swing. That's a kind of a weak swing. We want to see, uh, there you go, that's better. Anywhere from like one to four is usually a gooder, like a better swing. So I went a little high, a little low, there you go. Okay, so this is what we want. A nice swing from high and low, just like that. And then when we come into here, we notice we're in closed loop, short term's kind of happy, everything's good. All right. Exorith. So, that's what a uh, Jeep sounds like with four hole ejectors and probably an exhaust leak. like a bit of a fart cannon so that's wonderful smoky okay so that's our four holes so now we're gonna see how the uh, 12 holes go gonna hope for the best okay so right here is our fuel rail uh, on the Renix you might see something a little different since I have an HO swap these are gonna be a little different uh, this is actually a an HO rail from the the older years since we got two fuel lines up at the front on the Renix guys you'll have one at the front one at the rear um, if you can you don't really have to take the fuel lines off if you have the room to wiggle uh, if you have to take them off there's quick connect fittings and all that stuff you'd have to mess with and it's a bit of a pain honestly so yeah if you can get around that try to get around that um, so there's four bolts that hold the rail on. One, two, uh, three, and four. Okay. Now we're also going to have to take off this bracket for the HO guys. For Renex, you got like a goofy thing over here, so you won't have to worry about that. We got our six injector plugs. Uh, if this is like your first time taking these out, you might want to label them. They got little metal clips, but if they don't have clips, they'll just pull right out. If they do have clips, you might have to fight with a, uh, a pick, or you can just get them to pull out. But that's what the metal clip looks like, if you can see that. There you go. So yeah, you can either pick them out or pull, and if they release, they release. So yeah. That's all them. 
you might not have to take out the uh, vacuum lines. If you do, just try to remember where they go. That's all. And if there's any kind of uh, sensors that you got to remove, just remember where they go. We got our TPS sensor. We've got our intake air temp sen sensor over there. And then a couple vacuum lines that are going to have to move. All right, so we're going to unbolt all these 10 millimeters and see if we can wiggle the rail out. Oh, yeah, there was another thing I was supposed to talk about. So over here is our Schrader valve for the fuel rail. So we are going to want to release the fuel pressure before we remove this. Because this could be potentially under up to almost 40 PSI of pressure. So get yourself a little rag so you're not, you know, igniting yourself on a hot exhaust. You know, it's probably best to do this on a cold engine. Because <laughs> fuel is uh, flammable if you didn't know. But we got a little Schrader valve there. Watch your eyeballs, put on your safety squints, and just give her a little squirt squirt. Okay. There. Not a ton of pressure, but you know, enough that you might want to uh, consider releasing it. Mm mm. Gasolina. Alright, so we can put that cap back on, keep things clean. And we'll start taking stuff apart and putting injectors in. Okay. So now this bracket is removed, just those two bolts. Now you're also going to have to take this off, so this one pulls forward like that. You might have to push it a little hard, just be careful. This one just kind of rolls off if you can get one of the... Uh, you can use it to your advantage to uh, pop this thing out. Just push. There she goes. Okay, she pops right out. Okay, now we can just move this off to the side, just out of the way of the fuel rail. Then we can remove our four bolts, make sure no sensors are in the way. And just try not to mix up any of your fuel injector connectors if you didn't label them. Most of the factory wiring is so old it'll just kind of hold its position anyway, so you should be okay. Okay, so now you can see we got plenty of access once those bolts are out. Okay, so we got a little WD-40 to uh, loosen up all the um, all the injectors. Just sprayed them around the, the O-rings, all up in there. Okay, so this is going to go one of two ways. When we wiggle this rail, one, it's probably going to be pretty stiff. It's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass. But either the injector is going to separate from the intake or from the rail. It doesn't really matter which is which. Uh, I'd like them to come out of the intake, but it'll usually be about half and half. So... Get some gloves on and uh, go to town. All right. Grasp firmly and wiggle. Yeah. Wow. Ain't that funny? It worked out just the way I wanted it to. Okay. Cool. Uh, oh yeah. Fun fact. Since there is still a lot of fuel in the rail, uh, if any of these injectors were to come out, you'd be leaking fuel. So yeah, just be aware of that. But. It actually came out the way it was supposed to. Holy cow. So we're gonna try and orient the rail up like this. So that way uh, when we take the injectors out, they're not leaking everywhere. But oh uh, yeah, fuel rail is free. So now we can see what some sabbies look like. I don't know if I'll get her to focus properly. There you go, four hole. Okay. Not tea bag, a little dirty, but uh, she'll do. So I guess we're gonna try and polish up the holes a little bit and uh, swap injectors so yeah you'll just sit here and wiggle these free and uh, be good to go sometimes they'll be stuck in there I noticed with this one some of the holes they came out really easy other holes they were really stiff but yeah you just want to rock them back and forth I'm gonna spray some WD in there to try and uh, free them up but uh, they come out the same exact way you just want to be careful uh, especially if you try to intend to reuse the o-rings, but uh, yeah, you should probably replace them especially if it's been a while Luckily the injectors that we got come with o-rings already on them. So not a worry, but uh, yeah Oh, yeah one last thing on the Renix rails I believe there are clips that hold the injectors in place too. all, all these little slits there are little square uh, Brackets that actually clip over the rail and are supposed to hold the injectors in place You will have to remove those brackets as well I think they just pop out with like a flathead or whatever kind of prying device you got. After that, then you can pull it out. 
So I actually wiggled one out. What you want to do is you kind of work in a circular motion and you just kind of, you know, you'll, you'll get it to come out, but just kind of work it. It'll pop out. So here are the two injectors side by side. You notice they have the same exact plastic body style. Again, this is an EV6 body style. Nothing to do with the connectors. Jetronic, US car. So you can see the differences there. So we're gonna lube these guys up and slide them in there. And uh, should be good to go. Yummy. All right, uh, for me, I like to put them in the rail first and then wrestle the whole rail onto the intake. That's the way I like to do it. So yeah, we'll lube this up and we'll kind of wiggle it in. Now, when you do this, you have to be extremely careful that you do not pinch the O-ring. You'll tell, you, you can know when it's pinched, but you have to again kind of wiggle it in there. Uh, but if you pinch it and you rip it, it's gonna leak. So you have to take the time to do it right. If you notice that no matter what, it's really stiff and you just can't get the damn thing to work right, what you can do is use a little sandpaper real lightly, clean up the inside, and then it'll it'll basically just pop right in there. So you don't want to go too hard because you do want some friction. But yeah, if, you, if you're ever getting caught up, just clean it up real, real gently, and then uh, you should pop it in. But again, use that same circular motion to work the, the injector down in there. If you see that, that the, the O-ring starting to bulge on one corner, you got to stop, take it out and then just try to work it down. You, you'll see. If I ever get any issues, I'll show you. Okay, so there you go. New injector is pushed onto place. Now, uh, interesting fact, pushing down on this is going to put pressure on the rail, so it's gonna be difficult to get the last one in because you notice the fuel on this one raised. I actually pulled that so I could push this one in. So that'll make things a little difficult. Uh, I think if one of the lines were disconnected, it might make things easier because there's whatever. Uh. So just be aware. But, you know, they should press on there relatively far when you, when you do it right. The O-ring was not pinched or anything. If you look around all the edges, you don't see any of that out there. If, if it's really hard, you gotta, gotta check that O-ring. Again, you gotta keep these in really good shape, because otherwise you gotta pull it all apart again when it leaks. So, do it right the first time. Okay, just so you can see what's going on here. Give it a little spurts. And then what you're gonna do after the, the hole is nice and clean, push it in here. What you kind of do is you work it and you try to, you, you just press. So you try to press the, the O-ring in on different spots. And then once you know she's good, then you can wiggle it out. Simple as that. I know, I made that look really easy. It takes some practice to get that right. But that's all you do. Wiggle them in, wiggle them out. Okay, this phone is garbage and likes to die at 50% battery. Awesome. Okay, so I cleaned out all the holes and we have all the injectors lined up. So what we're going to do is try to push on the rail and wiggle it to get it to go down. I'd love to show you, but this thing's probably going to die and the video is not going to save. But just know that they're in the rail. Everything's lubed up and clean. There's no dirt and dust. You just kind of work your way and push it and wiggle it back and forth until they all slide in. Okay. So the rail's pushed into place and bolted down. So I just want to show how these uh, adapters work. So the side away from you might be a little hard to line up, but you just kind of make sure it goes around the, uh, the thing. It'll press in, and this part clicks on. There you go. That's how you do it. Okay, so uh, real quick before I hook any sensors back up, we're just going to prime the ignition a few times and see if anything leaks. Everything looks kind of dry. Okay. All right. Well, if that's the case, then I guess we'll uh, we'll put everything back on, put the bracket on, hook up your wires, your vacuum lines, all that, and then we'll go for a start and see what happens. Okay, so everything is hooked up. We got all our uh, injectors and vacuum lines and everything. I, I just left the, uh, the throttle cables off real quick. So I just want to see what happens. So generally, when you know your job is done, you should disconnect the battery uh, for like 30 seconds to drain the ECU of its memory so that it can run fresh. But just for giggles, I want to see what happens when we try to start it with the new injectors as is. So I don't expect it to actually start or run very well, but I just want to see if it starts at all. Okay, so we get our loop status, oxygen sensor, millisecond in, short term. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay. Let's 
check for leaks real quick. Okay, no leaks, that's good. Very good. It's actually running rather uh, well. I wasn't expecting it to start up like that. Not bad. Oh yeah, it's starting to get real rough. Real rough. Oh, did it just try closed loop? Did I already miss that? Let's check this. Closed loop, okay. Let's see what it does. Alright, it's going down, it's going down, it's going down. Really? Actually stabilizing, huh? Holy crap. That's a little surprising because the engine sounds like it's bogging down a little bit. It definitely sounds different. Unless it's just what smoother sounds like, I don't know. But it sound it does sound a little a little different. Well, well, we'll let the air work out of the system and all that. So I'm going to pull the battery and uh, let that reset. And uh, I guess we'll see how it runs. Okay, so we pulled the battery to reset it. So we will turn it to the on position. So the way that we can tell, that's interesting. We go on to here. Okay, so right now you can see our long term is at 128. So then you know that it's reset. Cool. Alright, and I just wanted to check those values out, but... Alright, so now this is going to be a yeah, start on a fresh system. See what it does. Rough. No me gusta. Probably used... Oh, God. Look at how high that is. We're going to go here. going to go here. Yeah, it's just it's spraying way too much fuel. This damn Renix, man. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it some gas now. Okay, we're gonna let off. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. No, you can't do it. That's too much fuel, you motherfucker. Come on. Back off slowly. gas right now. It is running unassisted. Oh, okay. We're in closed loop. And... Come on. Recover. Recover. Give up. Okay. So if you notice that one, it was trying to give more fuel to get the oxygen sensor to respond. So that was interesting. Okay, so I've just been driving it for like a mile or so. It still shakes. I'm not sure if it's like missing on uh, one of the cylinders or what's going on. It just, it sounds like crap. Like this shaking is the engine. If I let off the gas, totally smooth. So, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if one of them's not spraying properly. But, you know, trying to give it gas, it just... Eh. Look at how much fuel it's dumping, man. It's running so freaking rich. Okay, so I'm trying to narrow down this misfire, and one of the ways you can do that is if it's an injector, all you gotta do is pull the wire. So, listen. See how it's starting to run rough? And then it returns. Same with the next one. Runs rough. It returns. This one's real bad. 
gets real rough. And then it'll return. Runs rough. Returns. Runs rough. Returns. But the weird thing is, when I do that to number three, nothing. I don't notice a difference. We'll get back in. No change. I'll do it again with the fan. Off. So it's unplugged. Now it's not unplugged. I don't get it. I don't know it's a change. So either the injector's not firing or the spark plug's not firing. The first thing you can do is with, an, with the multimeter, you can ohm out your injector, because we should get somewhere around uh, 16, 15 ohms of resistance on these. This is with the adapter on. We can take uh, our two leads and touch them on this. And, hold on. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, we're at like 15. So the connector is making contact with the injector and the injector is showing the right ohms. Now I took the connector out and put it in this guy and then measured continuity between the end of that terminal and these wires and that also checked out. But the only problem is we can't really check it when they're both plugged in like this because, you know, it could be that you know, there's, there's pressure on the, the wire. It's not making contact. But general check seems to check out. So the only other thing I could think of is we'd have to pull the rail and then take that injector and move it to, like, the first one and see if anything changes, see if it, if it moves. Uh, the other thing we could do is, you know, pull the spark plug or see if that's sparking or if it looks like crap or something like that. At least it's easy to reach. Okay, so here are two spark plugs. This one is number three. This one is number four. So you notice number four is uh, white and number three is black. I would assume black is fuel or oil or something like that. I don't know. But they do look different. Ugh, I'm wondering if I should pull one more just to see uh, what the norm is. Okay, so I pulled cylinder two, and uh, yeah, you can see the odd one now. So that's uh, definitely our problem, child. All right, so it sounds like we're on the right path. So now we just gotta figure out what the heck's going on. Uh, I even tried switching one of the adapters over just to check and see if one of the adapters was messed up. Took it off one, put it on there, then you could you could easily tell the difference, but it's still the same. So we gotta freaking pull the rail and swap injectors. So everything is hooked up again. So what, what I did was I swapped one and three. I also left the bracket off this time so we can see if that's an issue too. So the one that's bad I have a white paint mark on so I can follow it in case I forget. All right, everybody's connected. Let's see what happens. Okay, so first off, okay, that one's good now. Yeah, okay, so I just did an Omi test just to check. This one's 13 ohms, that one's 13 ohms. So they have the same ohm reading. The connector's working. I swapped connectors, I swapped the injector around, and the injector followed. So I'm pretty sure we have an injector that's not flowing for some reason. So that kind of sucks. Alrighty, let's see what Rafi has to say. In case you are curious, this is the amount of effort that a bolt will go through to not hit the ground. 
See that? Are you are you seeing this? This cannot be made up, folks. Look at that. Literally sitting right on that little wire. What an asshole. Drive you fucking nuts trying to find that piece of shit. Come here. Get out. Mechanics life, man. Gotta love it. Okay, here we are. And check it. I messaged Rafi Tuesday evening. It is Friday. And I have the injector in my hand. K suspension. Killing it, man. Alright, we're gonna pop this bad boy out. We're gonna swap her and see how she do. Rails back together again. Getting real good at that. <laughs> okay, so... All the sensors are hooked up. I guess we should go get that REM, huh? Okay, let's see how she do, eh? Ooh, baby. She's running. Normal rich business, but, you know. What are you gonna do? That's Renix for you. Definitely must have some kind of exhaust leak. Still sounds like a fart machine. No real stumbling to be uh, heard of. And just to assume. Yeah, see, there's a difference now. Okay. So it's going to slowly work down the oxygen sensor until it uh, can go into open loop. Or, uh, closed loop, I'm sorry. Alright, we're in closed loop now. Really? That's incredible. What? <laughs> I... I've never really seen that. I don't know if the oxygen sensor is just being silly, but... Like, the short term barely even moved. It's just kind of sitting there, like, hanging out, having a good time. With the old injectors, it would drop down to, like, almost zero. Huh. I... I'm a little baffled right now. I'm not sure what to say. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to seeing this. <laughs> what? How's our uh, gallon per hour doing anyway? Eh, gallon per hour is a little high, so it means it's using more fuel than before. So that's interesting. I don't know if the oxygen sensor is just not warm and responding or what, but... I guess I'll have to take it for a drive then. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're doing a lot better now. Now the oxygen sensor is actually warmed up. It's actually working now. And dude, this thing feels so smooth. Holy crap, it's like weird. You know, this short term's down quite a bit now. Our oxygen sensor is actually, you know, moving like it should. And just like, damn, this thing. <laughs> I can just, I can feel the engine already. It definitely runs smoother. That's incredible. I was, uh, I wasn't sure what to expect, but damn. I guess 12 holes might actually be worth something. That's cool. That's really cool. Like, it's, it's kind of creepy because I don't really feel the engine. Like, usually you can kind of feel it shake a little bit, especially with my, my, uh, brown dog motor mounts. And now it's just kind of like, I don't know. I'm almost worried. This this feels a little too good for a Jeep.
Okay, so it's been a couple weeks. Been driving the Jeep around with the new injectors, and man, that's nice. That's real nice. I, I was a little, uh, I was wondering, you know, would I notice a difference from 4 to 12? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's about as big of a jump as it was from uh, standard to 4, but I honestly don't even remember that too well. So, I noticed the engine is a lot smoother while cruising, like it's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it feels very nice, and throttle acceleration is also noticeably more punchy. It's it's great. You get into it, and you can just, you feel that power, man. It's, it's gorgeous stuff. So, right now, we are at a long term of about 130, uh, but this is a little unfair, because uh, I've got a wideband sensor now, and I might be running off of that. But, uh, yeah. It's it's better. It's just all around better. Long term's good. Power is good. Smoothness is good. I don't know about economy yet because I don't drive it long enough to know. But I know that with the new injectors and the new sensor that I'll show you later, dude, this thing gets much better fuel economy. This thing's at least getting like plus three MPGs. We're from ten to at least thirteen, at least. But yeah, if you were wondering, is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, even even when you have four holes, it's worth it. It feels beautiful. Do yourself a favor, get yourself some 12 holes, because it is just, mmm. So yeah, case suspension, my dude. Get some injectors and feel the power. Yeah. Give me a few, give me a five, give me a dollar, that is out.